All right, so I, I believe yesterday we pretty much were, were in this area right here. Erase all slides. And I know there's a little bit of confusion, so I just want to back up just a little bit and just make sure that you guys are, are clear on a couple things. So when I talk about bolts, <coughs> AN bolts, standard AN bolt hardware, if I want to talk about a bolt part number, so that's a bolt part number, bolt part number, and I talk about a regular old bolt, it's, they're called AN bolts, so that part becomes an AN, and then you have the first digit is, is what? 16. Diameter in <laughs> sixteenths. So if I have an AN5, that means it's 5 sixteenths. Then I have a dash. Now this dash, and this is it's going a little above what you need to know right now, but this dash can either be a dash, an H, or a C. Or So that means, um, so a dash means that it's CAD plated. A C means there's a hole drilled in the head, and C means it's CAD plated. So you can put it together if it's, it can never be a dash and a C because a dash means it's a CAD plate. I think I said the wrong thing. Yeah. C is corrosion resistant steel, sorry. So it can never be a dash and a C at the same time because it's either a dash, CAD plated, or it's a C, corrosion resistant steel. Follow me? It's got to be a dash or a C. Um, so the dash is not going to be there, it's going to be a C. Be a C, right? So... Uh, again, it's just a little more than you have to know right now, but I just want you to be aware. So I could have a 5C6. <coughs> That's 5 16 inch diameter, corrosion resistant steel by <coughs> length. Length and eighths. So, yeah, it'd be 6 eighths. Right, so six eighths, so that'd be three quarters. So three quarter, or I could have a five hotel six, which means that it's five sixteenths with a drilled head and six eighths long. Or what if I want corrosion resistant drilled head? Well, that'd be five uh, ch. That's the only time you're really going to see two, I think, together. Ch, corrosion resistant drilled head. Now, I could uh, add one more thing. I could say it's a five, we'll say dash, so that means what kind of bolt? It's a CAD plate. Which is regular or CAD plated, that's what you need to know. Dash six, alpha, what does the alpha mean? No, no, there's no hole. Absent. Absent the hole where the cotter pin goes, all right? So this is what a bolt part number is gonna look like. So I could, you know, I could give you part <coughs> numbers all day for bolts, and AN, AN4-4. An AN 4 12 alpha, right? These are all part number bolts. Uh, AN 5 22. What's that? How, how wide? 5 sixteenths by how long? 2 inches and 2 eighths. I'm okay if you just give it to me like that, but then you have to reduce it, which becomes. Oh, yeah one quarter, so two and two eighths inches, all right? So we have the bolt part number. This is what I'm gonna ask for when I go to the tool room. This is how I'm gonna identify it on a project. This is what the bolt is. I'm backing up. All right, but when we go to this chart, okay, oh, not a but. So I wanna torque this bolt. I wanna, I wanna torque it, I wanna tighten. So either I'm tightening the bolt up into something or I've got a bolt and I'm tightening the nut. Doesn't matter, it's all the same same thing, all right? Most of the time we're talking about the nut, torquing the nut on the bolt. Usually if you're, if you're actually tightening a bolt into something, you get a specific torque from the manufacturer. So, but we're talking now about just tightening a bolt up, or sorry, tightening a nut up on the bolt. So I think, well, how tight should I make the nut that is going on, I don't know, this particular, how tight should the nut be? So then I'm gonna to go to this chart and I'm gonna look at this chart. All right, first I'm gonna to go to the manufacturer, look for specific, then I go to the manufacturer's general, and if there's nothing, then I'm gonna to go to this. So I had a 5 16 I'm sorry, I had a, oops. A N, what I have, a five dash, six, six. six. all right. Okay, this six right here, means nothing to me. I don't care at this point. 
the length of the bolt has really no bearing on, on the tightness. Just, we can just throw it out. Let's see here. We're just going to throw that. Don't care. Doesn't matter. What matters is this AN5 part. All right. So it's an AN5, which is how big? Okay, I'm just going to write that down here so we can remember. That's 5 sixteenths. All right. So I have a bolt, and I've just measured it, and I've determined that it's 5 sixteenths. How am I going to measure it? By the diameter. And what kind of tool would be good for use on that? A caliper. All right, so I take a dial caliper and we got my calculator. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll do that next week. So I lost it. All right, so uh, we have a 5 sixteenths, and so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to look. It's either going to be this one, or it's going to be this one. Chances are it's going to be either fine or coarse. What do you think? Fine. Chances fine. are it's going to be fine, especially if it's an AN bolt. It's going to be fine. AN bolts are fine. All right, so I'm going to look at that, and I'm going to say, okay, so I've got to now figure out what is my threads per inch, TPI, threads per inch. i got to figure that out, figure out if it's coarse or fine. So I have two choices. It's either going to be what? 24 or 18. So I'm going to get out those little thread pitch gauges, the little combs, if you will. And I'm going to try the 24 and the 18. And you know what? It just happens to be this one. Why? Because I know it would be. Because it's an bolt. So it's 24. So there we go. So now we're going to come across, and I have three sets of torque values. Right there, right there. You have to look up here. Remember... Oil-free, cadmium plated. What if it's corrosion-resistant steel bolt? Use a different there you go. What if it's got oil on it? Use a Clean it off. All right. So oil-free <laughs> cad plated <laughs> threads. Okay. Torque mean? limits for installation bolts loaded primarily in shear. And let me see. Bolts loaded primarily in shear. And this is for shear and. The, Right, wait, torque bolt limits recommended for installation. Bolts load. And that's not what I wanted to do there. Let me just get rid of that because that's just going to confuse things. All right. Go back over here. Where to go? There it is. Pen. Okay. So then right here it's got tension nuts and shear nuts. So I'm just going to look in this section here and I come down. And if it's loaded in tension, then it's going to be this. If it's in shear, it's going to be this. And remember, if you have a castellated nut, you're going to go to the lowest torque. Try and fit the castellate. Line up the holes. If it doesn't line up, I can go from 100 all the way to what? 225. Everybody know how to read the chart? Okay. Everything's got to have a safety. We do torque. Yeah, we talk about torque. Since we're talking about torque, we'll just stay with it. All right, so torque. Well, I'm a bit of a stickler for torquing stuff, mostly because that's what worked on a lot of engines, and even a little bit of a little bit of error caused a lot of problems. So, I came from the automotive world. <clears throat> well, let me write this here. So, aircraft mechanics. Must use proper torque. Why must you? Because if you don't torque it down bad enough, you're at the high uh, risk of loosening. Okay. And if you over <coughs> Exactly right. Okay, so who around here works on cars? How often do you torque stuff on your car? If I'm working on the engine right? part, then yes. Okay, engine part. If it's the engine, I'll work it. If it's something, well, I guess suspension too. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. I don't know. 
I go to snug tight and then one quarter turn. <laughs> well, like, like, it was like uh, when you're doing like uh, like your the wheels on your car. Okay. You know, like I'll do it nice and snug yeah. tight, made it to where I can yeah. do it, and then I'll just give it one good quarter turn. Right. How come I can't do that on an airplane? Well, higher turn. Or yeah, I well, the cars aren't FAA. <laughs> His cars aren't FAA. Well, what what happens if if your if your uh, your wheel fails on the car? You guys on the ground. On the car, you're on the ground. You don't have that far to fall. They have AAA. You never notice they don't have AAA for airplanes? <laughs> don't. <laughs> it's a little little late right there. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think so. There's you just mostly need a shovel. Yeah. So, now there are companies that, that, that specialize in that, and yeah, you, you, don't, you don't tow it to the place to get fixed at that point. It's, uh, it's too late. So, anyway, um, it's just the stakes are too high, and the stuff we deal with has closer tolerance, and we deal with a lot smaller bolts that are not, um, they don't tolerate over-torquing quite as much. So, you have to figure everything is about weight. Uh, it's becoming more that way with cars, but airplanes are really into that weight. So when you look at the difference between the nuts, you got to have a different nut if it's shear or tension. Why? Because you can save a few ounces, save a few ounces here, save a few ounces there. Before you know it, you've saved a lot of a lot of money. Um, gosh, I was reading about I think it was uh, one of the planes Boeing was building a triple seven, I believe it was, and they came in overweight, and so they had like a contest there in uh, Boeing. It was like anybody, every something like you could make. I forget what it was. Uh, some cash prize, like $100 for every ounce you could save, you know, or, or something like that. So everybody who came in with, you know, we could save, and we're talking ounces. If you could save one ounce, you, you made money off of it, and they would take, if they took your idea. So er, even the, the slightest amount matters. So everything has got to be made light, and, and so um, if it's light, then you need less fuel, you need less fuel, you can carry more passengers, on and on and on. So it just isn't this tolerable. All right. Uh, so I came from the automotive world, um, and I would actually get reprimanded if I did not have an impact wrench in one hand. So everything had to be done with an impact wrench. Take off a fender, impact wrench. Take off a bumper, impact wrench. And I worked back in the old days where bumpers actually weighed. You actually had bumper jacks that were not used for lifting a car, but simply to jack up the bumper to put it on the car because the bumper weighed more than I did. Uh, all right, so, so I impact wrench on everything. So it's funny, you know, like we start out in engines, and... It won't happen now because I'm telling you this, but usually somebody comes in and kind of acts like they just discovered sliced bread. Do you know you can use an impact wrench? And so I just say, oh, I don't use impact wrench. And I would explain how an impact wrench is actually impacting. And so, you know, to me, I want a torque so that, that increases to the final torque as where I would say an impact wrench kind of impacts until it gets to the final torque. So you had some sort of over torquing, over stressing on the bolt. So I had this whole theory about that. And then um, I went to Lycoming and was watching a video of their process and they just used torque wrenches. So I don't know what to tell you about that. But I'm still going to stand by, by the way, I built my engines. I didn't use torque wrench uh, because they're very expensive and I still believe in this right here and I've got data on that. So I'm just going to say, because this is me now, do not use do not use impact wrenches. Do not use impact impact wrenches unless uh, specifically authorized. Would that be specifically authorized by the manual or yes, the, oh, manual? Yeah. Okay. So if I opened up the Lycoming engine manual and it said using an impact wrench, oh, okay, now I'm going to use it. If it doesn't say that, I'm not doing it. That's me. And that's on the test. All right. Torque. Torque is based on T U R Q U E. Finish spelling the word. Torque is based on the bolt size and not the wrench size. You seeing a theme here? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> so what do we use to achieve proper torque? To, to achieve proper torque, torque, we will use a torque wrench. There are several different types.
Who has a torque wrench in here? All right, there you go. Who enjoyed standing in the tool room line today? Oh, yeah, nobody? Remember, remember what I said? Bring to them tools? I'm starting to see it? Would you let us use the quick style torque wrench? Or Heck yes. No, nah, let's use a quick type. I have no problem with that. All right, let's talk about the different types. So we've got click. We've got dial. We've got the bar type. Yeah, bar, bar, and now more and more they're becoming electronic. <clears throat> okay, so the click type. What's that? Elect electronic. I'm going to go through them right now, so you're trying to talk about it. Okay, so the click type. Now, I let students teach me a lot too. I'm always learning here. And the one thing I've learned about click type is that I better explain it. When a click type has basically got the head moves, it, uh, it breaks away. So it's locked in by, um, it's got a little indent on the inside with a little ball in there that holds it in a spring. The tighter that spring is, the more it's going to hold that head. So when you achieve the proper torque, you can hear a one click, click. So I was at last year or something, I had somebody strip out every single bolt there was on a project. <laughs> I go, what are you doing? And I don't even remember, was it an engine? Oh, it was an engine part. Yeah, it's an engine's because they were, was it my torque wrenches or something? I don't remember, but they brought in, somebody brought in a click type and that, well, I thought I would just keep clicking. Oh. <clears throat> you know, I don't know what, it doesn't take batteries. It doesn't plug in. I don't know what you thought. It was just, so it goes one click, one click and then boom. And then so, um, and of course with this one, you have to do nice, you know, all of them, nice, steady, even pull. If you jerk it, you can always trick it into clicking. So these are really nice. The thing I love about click type is that you can set it for, it you know, kind of looks like uh, it's got the, the scale here. You can set it for exactly what you want, kind of get yourself in position. And sometimes you're doing a lot of torque and you can, you don't have to worry about looking down and getting there and looking at the numbers. You can actually just do a nice, steady, even pull. You get the click and you can let go. The downside to a click type is there are some manuals that tell you to put an X like 600 inch pounds and hold it for a count of 10. Well, you can't do that with a click type because once you achieve the proper torque, it clicks and you're supposed to let go at that point. You can't just hold it at the click. It doesn't work that way. So, all right, so click type. Tell me, out of the, the two, which one would you recommend? I love my click types. <laughs> I dislike these with a passion. Okay. I do not like these. Now, I know that's my opinion. And I know there's other people who have a different opinion. I hate these. I hate these because, especially uh, this one. This one's in foot pounds. And they, I believe in the ones. No, it's inch pounds. So this is a tiny. We should have these. But you guys have ones that, I don't know. To me, it's Snap-on's fault. The effective length isn't correct. It's, they're too short for how much they go up to. So when we're going to be doing engines and you're going up to 600 inch pounds on the cylinders, it's very short and you're shaking and the needle's bouncing. You should have a nice long one and you got to get your face just right in there to read it. And with that much weight, it's just really hard. So uh, for that reason, I don't like it. The upside of these is you can put torque on, hold it and watch. So there's the upside. Uh, okay, this is the old beam style. These things are a great teaching tool. For one purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the same thing. B E A M. Oh, sorry, man. This is the B type. B E A M. B type. I have one here. And in my my shop, we used to actually calibrate outside stuff. People send us torque wrenches from all over the stinking world for whatever reason. Um, and we never really did any of these, which is funny because they're just an antiquated. So the way that it works is as you pull down on this handle. The, the beam is going to deflect and this bar here is going to stay put and show me the torque. But the handle is on a little pivot. It's got one little pivot point right there. So pivots back and forth. And so in order to use it properly, you have to hold it in such a way that the handle does not touch this beam. So it's got to float perfectly in there. And it teaches you how to hold the handle properly. Mm -hmm. Because if I twist the handle, I'm going to put false reading in here. And that actually is, goes for all of the torque wrenches. If you're twisting your hand, it's, it, it adds just a little bit of false torque. So you learn how to hold it just right and pull evenly without twisting your arm. 
And when we get into cylinders, you're going to be doing using cylinder based wrenches, which have a funny curve to it. And you can add tremendous amount of torque and uh, not even know it. So I'll have you guys practice and I'll teach you how to actually use a torque wrench on the machine that some of you have already used and practice. And I'll say, okay, go up to, you do it your way and go up to 300 inch pounds. And I'll look at it and go, well, you're at 600. You think you're at 300. You just add, you doubled it by the, by the way you hold stuff. So there's definitely a way you have to hold it. And then we have the electronic type. Uh, these things are crazy accurate. Uh, I have one of these, the bottom one right here. Somebody just gave it to me. And it's like, ah, I found it in my garage. You want it? Um, and I brought it in and calibrated it. I was like, dang, that thing is so accurate. Um, and it's nice, it plays, you know, a little, you can set it for your max torque, uh, you read peak torque, it's just got a little transducer on it, and you use your own sockets. So. <coughs> These are really, really nice. So yeah, if I had my choice, I guess now I'd buy this one. That one on top of the really, really expensive too. Ah, uh, they've really come down in price. Mm -hmm. They really have. I think, seriously, this one here was, is tw was 20 bucks. Craftsman uh, discontinued it. So, all right, so we have, we already talked about that. What's that? No, I like Craftsman. Um, I have a Craftsman torque wrench. It's the biggest piece of crap I ever bought. Well, not all tools are great. I know. Um, it was just because of the way it was put together and how the window was integrated into the handle. And if the handle turned, the window turned, and then it gave you a false, false reading or if it slid up or down. So uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, so you know, I... We calibrated torque wrenches. I've seen them all. I built engines. Which one did I have? Well, at the time I built engines, this this one here would have been probably three or four thousand dollars. So I didn't do that. But anybody familiar with Snap-on tools? What color does a torque wrench box? What color does is the box the torque wrench comes in? Red. Mine came in a gold box. It was so expensive. I kid you not. Katie will bring it in. You'll see it. They come in. They came in gold boxes. They had the highest guaranteed accuracy of any Snap-on torque wrench made. It was like one half of the other. It was tw twice the accuracy of the other one. So um, I forget what it was. Like the other ones are plus or minus six percent. These are like plus or minus three percent. And uh, it was the biggest piece of crap I ever bought. <laughs> I had the machine. The machine you guys are using. That was my machine. When I built engines, I would build an engine right here. Here's where the engine be building, and I had a, had a that was mounted to a table right next to me. So I would, every time I would go to torque something, I would set my torque wrench, I'd click type, and I would go over and I would practice and click it three, four, five times because it actually sets the spring and warms it up. And I could verify the accuracy to 100%. I knew exactly how to hold it, how to do everything. And that torque wrench was never accurate. I sent it back, I had the snap on guy send it back to the factory and he was so mad at me, but factory sent it back and it was perfect and it still is this day but but uh it was not at first it was not worth it so anyway sorry snap on um what's that B B oh i didn't finish spelling that thing it looks like bar i, mean, I probably did write bar yeah bar beam b e a All right, so if you have a torque wrench and you want to bring it in, fine by me. What must you do before you use it? All right, here we go. All torque wrenches. Torque wrenches must be calibrated. Must be. Okay, how often? The industry standard, the norm, is one year. That is a norm. And where did it come from? Well, if you have a repair station, you have to write in your repair station manual how often you're going to calibrate your stuff. And the FA likes to see no more than one year. So in our repair station manual, we write all stuff must be calibrated every year. So that becomes the norm. So, but it, I don't, I've never seen anything written anywhere that says you must do it every year. I have seen it written where it says you, um, actually the norm is annually. This is, I think, out of the Q&A or it's, but it's going to be the actual answer. When dropped or as per repair station manual, as per repair station manual. I want to say, talking to somebody who 
when you when you have your torque wrench calibrated, they put a sticker on it and has a calibration due date. And they're always going to put it one year later, just by default. And I talked to somebody who said, I just tell them to put two years. Then they did, and the FAA is like, well, what you're doing, it's a good with us. So, um, they accepted that. Yeah. Okay, so when you have your torque wrench calibrated, what they're going to do is, is torque wrenches aren't accurate through their whole range. They're going to send you a calibration card that says at this setting, for, you know, if you want to achieve this torque, your torque wrench should say this. For this setting, this, 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 this. And so you actually have to use that because there's a middle spot where they're accurate and they start to get inaccurate as you go either to the low end or the high end. Let me see. Uh, proper procedure is needed. Proper procedure. So hold the wrench properly. Hold <coughs> the wrench properly. All right, see this area right here? It's got this, this is called knurling. And right here it has written on there how, how many inches this is from this point to this point where the socket goes. So this is where you should be holding the wrench. I kind of, I center my hand right over that. Don't hold it way down here. Don't hold it way up here. Center your hand right on the knurling. The, uh, the click type is nice because the handle is laid out a little easier to hold on to and you, it's, it's more intuitive. So make sure you hold it in the right spot. Um, apply steady, even pressure. Steady, even pressure. Don't jerk it. Do not jerk. And I love that we have the little torque wrench machine here because you can go over there and play with it. You can see just how, how easy it is to get a really bad reading. Also, don't mess with that machine. Don't, uh, at rest, the, the meter, the dial is not on zero. That is not supposed to be that way. Everybody wants to go, oh, well, the meter just, the little dial doesn't quite say zero. They want, I'm going to zero it out for Kevin. So, so how do you know if your torque wrench is calibrated? calibrated. Okay, you got a sticker on it. Calibrated. How do you know the calibration machine is calibrated? It has a sticker on it. How do you calibrate the calibration machine? <coughs> okay, did you see that orange box sitting down below? That orange box weighs a little over 150 pounds. Weighs a little over 150 pounds because there's a little over 150 pounds of weight in it. So there's an adapter that goes on that machine that has a 10 inch arm with a weight uh, with a cable on it and there's three 50 pound weights and you take a 50 pound weight and you put it on and you have 10 inches of 50 pounds well how do i know that the weights are accurate the weights are certified they're certified those are certified weights how often how often i certify my weights i, I certify those weights every single year <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. just keeps going on and on. Well, oh. That's so weird because it's like, uh, it, it's like every six months, like our, our our calipers had to be calibrated every six months. Or, uh, uh, just different industries, it just seems seems everything like in, you know, in CNC machining, everything was calibrated every six months, from torque wrenches to to micrometers, everything. Okay. And it had the sticker on there. They yeah. have the sticker on there and. You know, they come in every six months. Hey, uh, or do you have a new sticker? They come in and check. Yeah. Uh, all our tools. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So it's just kind of weird that that it, you know, like you mentioned earlier. Well, every two years, just put two years down, and they came in. Oh, okay. Well, you're not gonna do that if you're a repair station. Oh, okay. That's just you work as a mechanic. You can try and get away with it. I don't know. I just mentioned it. Just oh. out there. Uh, the the actual machine, the one in there that we would calibrate torque wrenches on, it was stickered calibrate daily. Oh, yeah, so, oh, okay. so we calibrated it every morning. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It only takes a minute. It's you know. But you got to be certified to do the calibration, right? Or no? No, we had a person who came around who calibrated everything, and he is he had a truck and everything in it was calibrated to division of weights and measures, so his stuff was calibrated and you bring it calibrate your stuff. Oh, okay. So. That's the you gotta have that. That's 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 all right. Uh, let's see. Use correct torque. Use correct torque chart. 
What is the correct chart? What is the first one I should go to? Manual. Man well, they're all manuals. Be specific. The manual. The manual. <laughs> Thank you. Manufacturer's manual. We're going to give you half a point for that one. One? No, you get the full point. She gets half. So one and a half points. All right. M A. Manufacturer's manual is first. First we go to that. Uh, manufacturer's manual for specific torque. What do I mean by specific torque? So that, part specific torque then tell you. that part, like the wing bolts. You shall torque the wing bolts to 350 <coughs> inch pounds. Okay, that's the, I don't, that you don't have to measure the wing bolt. You don't know what size wing bolt is. It's just, it tells you that that wing bolt should be torqued to that. But then it just says, <coughs> torque the bolt, period. Then what? Okay. Nope. Manufacturer, then manufacturer's general torque, which is going to be a page that looks a lot like that one in 4313. Numbers may be exactly the same, they'll be a little different, but that's a manufacturer saying, if we don't tell you otherwise, just torque it to this. Then what if they don't have anything after that? Yep, okay, you're safe now. If no uh, data from manufacturer, I'm going to just put it manufacturer, period, manufacturer, then use, then use AC4313. Do I have any office fans in here at the office? Yeah. That's right. So I, it's like the thing with Kevin in here. So I abbreviate something. <laughs> Abbreviate, use few words. <laughs> See world. <laughs> wait, wait. And I always end up explaining myself 10 times longer than if I would. All right. Dry versus wet torque. <coughs> Unless otherwise specified, specify. Help me out here. Torque values are for. You got it. Torque values. Um, let me see. Torque values listed are <coughs> for clean and dry threads. Clean and dry threads. Wet torque increases torque, I should say preload, but increases torque by about 40%. And why is that? It turns easier. Yeah, it turns easier. So remember, the whole thing, the engineer never really, they don't care about this twisting motion. They care about the pulling motion that you get. And so if I have clean, dry threads and I twist it, it's going to twist, it's going to get harder and harder <laughs> to twist, which means it, um, at a, like 100 inch pounds, it, it only twisted so much because it's, it's dry and it's dry, and so it's, you know, it's kind of wants to stop. You have the friction, thank you, that's the word. Friction, it builds up, and so, oh, it doesn't pull quite as much. Well, now I take it, I put your oil on it. That nut's really going to turn real easy, so it takes a whole lot of twisting to get to the torque. Well, if I did a whole lot of twisting, it means that it went further, the nut went further down on the bolt and it stretched the bolt even more, right? So you're gonna get a whole lot more stretch out of wet torque, a whole lot. And some engineers have gotten down to where they are absolutely crazy specific about exactly what kind of torque you're gonna use. Like Lycoming, where they want you to an exact mixture of 100 weight uh, mineral oil to a certain ratio of STP. You know, old guys remember STP? Yeah. They still make that. We use it all the time in aviation. It's crazy. Oh, so STP, it's the oil additive. You know, it's the racer's edge, right? Yeah. So um, there is one specific part on, or a couple on light combing where they want you to use food grade anti-seize as the lubricant. Yeah. It looks like mayonnaise. 
Uh, yeah, so he's, well, then you can eat the engine afterwards. So, um, so if wet torque, use the proper lube. lube. Um, okay, when, I, when, I, when somebody tells me wet torque, I don't have one of these little cans and I put a little drop of oil right on there. You got to see how I build an engine. And you guys, I think it makes James a little bit crazy because the guy is great about trying to save the school money. I, I am the, like, okay, oil to me is free. So <laughs> I take a paintbrush and I dip it in and I slop it all over the threads and the part and it's dripping on the floor and I'm staining my clothes and I get it on the nut and it's just a sloppy mess. That's a wet torque, right? So if I have to ask if you put oil on it, guess what? That ain't a wet torque to me. So there's no doubt in my mind when I do wet torque, oh, it's wet. When I lubricate a cylinder, it done got lubricated. Um, <laughs> It done. Yeah, it did. So there is no doubt. So uh, so if it is wet torque, don't just guess. Use the right one. I actually have J written down here, and I put. Did I mention that the wrench size <laughs> is not the bolt size? It is on caps here. <laughs> it's not the bolt size. I had a graduate, one of the first years that I was teaching, came up to me and I can't get the prop, it's just not tightening up on this plane. Well, let me go see what's going on. I walked out there and it, there's the, you put the prop and then you put a bulkhead, it's aluminum bulkhead, and then the, it, they were three quarter inch bolts going in, uh, maybe half inch, yeah, half inch because I think, yeah, half inch because the head size was three quarter. Um, I get there and the bulkhead just bent around and it's like squished flat and like you can almost see through it. And I'm like, whoa, what'd you do? Well, you know, it's three quarter inch bolts. Uh, no, it's three quarter inch wrench. I mean, how much torque did you put on that thing? Well, like, you know, 11,000 foot pounds or something. I don't know. So anyway, so I thought, well, if you, I'm going to keep mentioning that. Okay. Using adapters. You guys. Using. Right, sometimes you have to use a thing called a torque adapter or a different adapter, something that's going to go on the torque wrench that is going to change how it's going to behave. And the only thing that's really acknowledged here, for the most part, on paper and in your book, is if you use these. There we go. Hey, look at that. Did I mention that? <laughs> Did I mention that the wrench size on the pulse? Uh, probably. All right, so um, we have these adapters. You guys are going to be using one that's like this, which is technically called a torque adapter. This is actually called a crow's foot adapter. I don't know, I set screw adapter, sure, if you say so, hose clamp adapter. Um, things, so this is, this is what's acknowledged. If you increase or decrease the effective, uh, from where you're torquing from. But in reality, if you have a very long extension that went straight out, it's going to lose some torquing in that. If you have a cylinder base wrench, even if it comes up, it goes over, out, and around, it ends up at the same spot, things change. So anytime you add something, things actually do change in real life, which is nice if you have the machine we have. You can put, put it all together. You can go over and practice, see how it changes things. But most people don't have a machine like that. And so what is acknowledged is that if you put some sort of adapter going away from where the right here is where the socket would normally attach so everything about this this torque wrench here has been set up and calibrated that if you put x number of pounds at this spot with a socket right here the <coughs> dial will be correct all right because if i say 100 inch pounds that is literally 100 pounds on a one inch bar if i have a so if i want 100 inch pounds and i have a 10 inch torque wrench, how many pounds would I be putting here, really? <clears throat> 10 pounds, right? 10 times 10 is 100, let's follow that? Yeah. Okay, or we could say if you had five foot pounds, because sometimes we, you, things can come in inch pounds or foot pounds. If I have five foot pounds, it's like, it's the same as five pounds on a bar that's one foot, follow? No, this is not a foot pound, boom, okay. <laughs> All right, so if you put any sort of adapter that extends out this way, you use this formula. 
where it's t times l divided by l plus e equals y. Y is a good letter. I forgot. Um, so in this particular example, what do you want? Um, I think they want 125 inch pounds. Is What's that? Didn't I say that? Oh, sorry, we got 135. So what, 135 inch pounds is what the book calls for. So the book is saying in this example, hey, you need to torque this nut to 135 inch pounds. If I want to know what that is in foot pounds, what do I do? Divide by 12. Divide by 12. OK, we're working with inch pounds here. So um, T is 135. So that's 135 divided by L. L is the 10 inch. Where do I get 10 inch? That's the length from here to here. How would I know that? The torque wrench says it right on there. It says right in the middle. So divided by 10. So we got to go this way. 10 plus, and then we have 1.5. What's this 1.5 bit about? Okay, that's E. So that's from here to here is 1.5 inches. So what we're doing is we're making this 1.5 inches longer. So do you think I'm going to need more or less pressure out here? Less. less. So we got to figure out how much less. So plus 1.5, and this is times up here. L, what is L? <coughs> Length again. So we have length and length over here, 10 and 10. So, and we're going to talk about this next week, but that would be if I, so I don't have my calculator, so I'm going to help me out. 1350 divided by 10 plus, that is 11.5. That's going to equal, well, I probably can tell you it's going to be 11, I forgot it's written right there. It's going to be 117.39. Guess I could cheat. I was feeling proud of myself doing this in my head. Um, you're like, it's written right there. I don't saw that vein, so I was like, I know. All right, so what does this 11739 mean? That's what my torque wrench should read. So without this little adapter, it should read 135, because I want 135, right? And this is set up to, but then I add this little adapter, and so, oops, it has to read 117.4. When I get to 117.4, I better stop, and then how much torque is going to be out here then? 135. Everybody follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we turn it around, do I have? Yes, I do have one. If I turn it around, am I, and I want 135, I'm going to put more or less pressure here to get that. <coughs> more. Okay. So this time, it, it's the same formula, but it's L minus E. Why so, would you ever turn it around? Uh, you'd be surprised. Yeah, we we, yeah, it's it, trust me, it just gets into that. I, I don't even, I've had to do it so many times that, I, but I can't think of one. It just you do, the way the clearances work out and stuff. It just happens. All right, what if so? The other one was um, T times L divided by L plus E, and this one over here is T times L divided by L minus E. And well, what if I put it sideways? Well, if we did the math, uh, t what was he? T is uh, sorry, 135 times 10 over um, L, which is 10 plus zero, or 135 times 10 divided by 10 minus zero. Well, guess what? The zero cancels each other out, and the answer is 135. And the answer is 135. So mathematically speaking, if you put it sideways, the answer is no change. I'm just trying to figure out, like, I'm trying to put it in my head. If you put it sideways like that, how mm -hmm. exactly that? Why? Well, because yeah, this line never changed. Yeah, I mean, I get it. If, like, if, like, the socket or anything was, like, right dead on. Like, I understand that. Yeah. But now you've got that little extension of a wrench there. Okay. Mathematically? Like, as you, as you spinning it. Follow me, though. How would that? Mathematically... This line is on. It's on this this line right here. Yeah. Okay. So L doesn't change. So if L doesn't change mathematically, it doesn't change. However, if you want to get technical, you have to consider the hypotenuse of this, and that does change. So there is a minor change. Yeah. So don't think there isn't. Mathematically, and for the book, and for FA purposes, and everything you got to know, sideways is the same. 
okay? And if you have a very little adapter, it will change very little. Yeah. If you have a very long adapter, it starts to really matter. So, all right. So if you really wanted to know, I don't have a formula for that. I just go to my little machine and kind of practice, figure it out. There you go. Do you follow that? Hopefully. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Figure out how it's like once you once you start cranking it, because it's like you, know, you got the handle coming out, and you got this extension here. Uh, when you're twisting it, like how does that? I'm trying to figure it in my head, like how does it? You do that <laughs> Tell you what, practice. Yeah, that's what practice with Katie like, on Monday. Then, yeah. If you haven't done it yet, you'll get a chance to do it Monday. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm hitting on Monday. Mm -hmm. The the twerking. Ah, oh, perfect timing. So let's take a break. Picture it in my head though. It was like, it was like, I know.